Welcome back to the farm, everyone. You're not going to believe this because I hardly believe it either. After we shut down the video operations yesterday, we ended up with a total of two inches of rain. Some spots got up to four. Thankfully, that wasn't us. Our ground will suck that up like a sponge. Hilariously, though, you go five miles to the north and they were still shelling corn and cutting beans, and they will be today, too, because they didn't get a drop. I'm not expecting anything terribly exciting today. The ground will need a day, even though it's been super dry. Two inches is more rain than we've gotten in the last six weeks, probably. Sloan's is going to come out today and finally install the grain tank hopper extension so Dad doesn't spill it all the time. So Dad's bringing her home right now, so they have a nice hard surface to work on. Based on the mud on the X9 that just appeared this morning when he was leaving the field, I don't think we have any beans that have cut. We also don't have any corn that's close. It's a good thing we hooked this up this morning because we immediately noticed a major problem. This will not fit into that coupler there. The holes don't line up correctly, so I don't think it's going to work. We stopped by the John Deere dealership to get some answers. I think we might have to change the pin, hopefully not the whole harness there on the corn head side. Look where dad turned around out there trying to get the combine out. We thought it'd be drier from that rain, and we also weren't expecting two inches or this stuff would not have been left in the field. Give it an hour or two, it'll be dry again. Amazing. Never mind, we're not always the smartest. There's an extra plug just bolted onto the side there, and after going to the dealership, talking to the parts guy, talking to the service manager, we came back and just looked at the head, and there is, in fact, a plug just sitting on there, ready to swap out with the one in the multi-point coupler. Now pull this stuff and hold on to it now. Well, which one do we want longer? This one? Hmm. No, I just accidentally let go of it. That on? No. Push this back down. Just bump it. There it went. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it was that easy. That easy, all right. Phil and Owen from Sloan's are here this morning. They're putting that grain tank extension on so we can hold another 180 bushels of corn. Should make a pretty big difference. To kill some time, Chris and I are going about five miles north to where it didn't rain to ear test the moisture on some April planted 109 day corn. Don't know if it's going to be dry enough. Doesn't hurt to check though. Look at that. Just like I told you, it didn't rain here, it rained a lot at home. Someone's picking corn. It's usually a good sign when the neighbor's picking corn. I believe his field was planted within a day or two of this one. The exception to that rule is that every variety and hybrid act differently. So he may have planted a hybrid that dries down quicker than this Pioneer 0953. I would guess though, because it's 109 day, regardless of how it dries, this should be closer to harvesting than we think. There's not much green left in here. Definitely some late season tar spot. It was probably far enough along to not matter. Something we always gotta keep an eye on. That's why we use that Mirvis Neo. We talked to the farmer across the road that was picking. He said anywhere from 17 to 20 on the combine monitor. The elevator's just up the road, so we're gonna use their moisture tester to see what this corn is. That 109 day corn ear tested right over 17%, so it probably harvests 18 to 19. That'd give us the green light to go ahead and pick that, I think, take it to commercial storage after they get the grain tank extension on. I don't know how long that'll take. Set a couple hours. Sometimes they're faster, sometimes they're slower. Projects just don't always go as quickly as you anticipate. We're guilty of that, if anyone. We've got our fire mitigation tool hooked up here. It's not gonna be an issue right now in our area, but north of town, it's still bone dry. Have this with that just in case there's an issue. I'd say that's where all the mud on the side of the X9 came from. Dad did a 20 point turn to get around here. 
we weren't anticipating that much rain or we would have done things a little bit differently. Sloan's is still at home putting the grain tank extension on. I don't know how much longer it's gonna take. They've already been on it for a few hours. I'm gonna go ahead and run the 8R in, fuel it up, so hopefully we can pick corn this afternoon. I've had a guy in the comments of some of my earlier harvest video asking why we run a grain cart as opposed to using semis in the field because he sees the silage guys run semis. It'd be less fuel, less equipment needed, less augering, so hopefully better grain quality, less fuel overall. The point he tried to make is that a loaded semi weighs less than a loaded grain cart and tractor combination, which is definitely true. I tried explaining to him that silage shopping is a completely different beast. Those guys are trying to get done, and I don't even know if you can run silage through an auger. I don't know entirely. I think you have to be able to blow it and throw it. That's why they load straight into the dump trailers or whatever carts they use to haul it back to wherever they're gonna pile it or bag it. The confusion is gross weight versus contact pressure on the ground. I'm going to explain my opinion as quickly and as dirty as possible to save time. Fully loaded legal semi, 80,000 pounds gross, maybe 90 depending on where you are in the local weight restrictions. This grain cart full of heavy corn with a tractor, probably 110, 120,000 pounds together. Okay, the grain cart tractor weigh more. This has 36 inch tracks with J&M's weight rating fully loaded. This 1222 grain cart has like 14 PSI contact pressure on the ground. I was only able to find an antiquated Texas A&M study about contact pressure on semi tires. The study said it's 6,000 pounds of load per tire, and that's probably higher than what you would see on a farm truck, more like four to 5,000. The contact pressure on the ground per surface area was 80 PSI is what I'm kind of guessing. So four to five times the ground compaction that the loaded grain cart is causing. We can talk about the data all day long. I can assure you, if it rains like right now and you tried to pull a grain trailer loaded into a field, you would know why farmers use grain carts. They're convenient, they can cross multiple terrain, and they can haul more usually than what your semis can. There is a very specific reason why grain carts are more efficient than driving your semis through the field. Semis pack the ever-loving heck out of the soil when they're loaded. Silage choppers, I think, are just trying to get their silage chopped. You can't compare them like they're apples to apples. Hauling corn out of a cornfield is not like chopping silage. Grain carts are the best choice if you care about reducing compaction. Yeah, if you're out in the desert or somewhere where your soil isn't as important or as sensitive as some of these black, silty loam soils, yeah, you can go drive your semi out. We're not gonna do that here, and I don't know that I've ever seen someone other than jokingly catch their combine with a semi. And I'm not making fun of the guy, I just kinda wanna explain the logic. It seems good on paper to just use semis and cut the grain cart out. If you look at the data, if you look at the empirical evidence and the anecdotal evidence of what happens on farms, semis need to stay on the road if you can. We pull them in for convenience and safety sometimes. The best bet though is to keep that very isolated weight out of the field and on the roads. It's better for your yields long term, I think. Grain carts are a lot harder to back up. That's the only downside to them. This field's dried a lot just in the couple hours of sunshine since the combine left. That's why we're not making as much of a mess. I also may just be lighter than the combine. I'm sure that X9 is not light, even on those LSWs. I hate having to do this, going as slow as possible to not throw a bunch of mud, let it kind of evenly come off. I'm trying not to make a mess on the road. We should have moved the combine and the tractor out of the field. We just didn't know it was going to rain this much. The silver lining of this rain is that it's going to knock a lot of those green leaves off the soybean plants, help even up the dry beans, and I think if the sun comes out next week, there'll be a lot of stuff that'll cut. I was told this was a two hour job and they've been out here for almost four hours, so I really don't know what's going on. It very well may stop us from being able to pick corn today, unless we just tell them to stop and take it off. Grain cart's pretty much ready to go, full of fuel, full of def, grease the grain cart, cleaned out the engine air filter, hosed out the radiator just to make sure there wasn't a bunch of bean dust in there. There was some, but not enough to be of concern. Just waiting on the combine to go and then we'll pick some corn today. I know it's drying because it's like blistering hot outside. It's warm.
Saturday ended up just being one of those days. I don't know if you've ever experienced one of those days. It was just one of those days. Took them longer than expected to get the topper on the combine. We definitely appreciate Phil and Owen coming out here, working on that. It took way longer. They've never installed a Dimco before, and they said the instructions were confusing. The hardware was complicated, and it wasn't as simple as the power toppers they use on most of them. The ones they normally install on S-Series combines are just an extra lip. The Dimco is like a dynamic folding. There's all sorts of installations you have to do. I think they partially weren't familiar with it and it just wasn't the easiest. So that took longer than expected. We are definitely happy they got it installed. It looks like it's done mostly correct. We may have to adjust a few things depending. Again, thankful that they did that for us. It was miserably hot and humid because of all the rain we had the day before. Of course, after that, we had plans of picking corn and then we put the corn head on and it wouldn't fold correctly for some reason. So that's a new issue. And then it looked like rain was coming across and it was late enough in the day based on how it gone so far. We didn't want to jinx anything or we'd read all of the lack of performance before as an omen. We shut down and then that next morning we got four tenths. So here we are a day later on Monday trying to address the problems and hopefully picking corn if it's dry enough. Dad's up there making some adjustments. Since we're all vertically challenged here, we installed this string to help ease the access to this door because we're not tall enough to have the appropriate leverage to open it easily. We didn't really consider the fact this morning that if you back up with the door down, you'll catch it with the tire and rip it off. Good thing I'm not that good at tying knots because this would probably have been uh, not good. Dad was making some adjustments to the Dimco extension. A few things we wanted to change with how it was installed. Now we're going to see if we can get the corn head to unfold or fold correctly. When I ran the calibrations yesterday, it would fold and unfold fine. When I did it with the automatic system, it's doing exactly what it's doing now. It's just kind of jumping back and forth. By jumping back and forth, like right now, it's doing nothing. The one workaround I've found for this so far, and it's not something you want to have to use, is going into calibrations, coming down to header, corn head wing position calibration, begin, next. Once combine in field mode, engine high idle. And then it's gonna recalibrate. Look how easily it does it that way. Everything's automatic, I just hold the button here and it'll unfold. There's no manual work around to unfolding these corn heads. You have to do it through the machine automated system or you have to use the calibration page. It's not really an effective way to do it. Look how easy it does it when it's on the calibration page. Yet the automated thing doesn't work. That makes no sense. The snouts on the pivot are struggling to pop up. I don't even understand. We've unhooked it, cycled the battery, cleaned the connectors folds just fine manually through the calibration page. It does look like it's going to let us pick using the manual calibration workaround. That's probably what we're going to have to do. We're trying the software update. That's what Ron said to do. Maybe that'll fix it. It said it's probably a software issue if it's folding in the calibration mode but not on the automatic mode. The software update did not fix the folding issue. We ran and talked to our John Deere dealership. They're going to send a tech out, maybe push some more official updates that I guess we can't do on our own through the combine to maybe fix that. And then if not, they'll look at actual hardware issues on the combine to see if there's something with the fitment that's not working. The bad news is that a rain is moving in. We didn't think it was going to rain till six o'clock and it's raining at nine o'clock right now. So don't know if we're going to be able to pick corn. Put her back inside for now so it doesn't get all stinky. It may be too late by the looks of those beans. Once they swell up with moisture, you know they are going to get a scent to them. Yeah, I'd say that we may not pick any corn today. Unless it just fizzles out. It'll give us some time to catch up on maintenance. Katie had that hydraulic oil leak in the valve body because of the O-ring. And we told them that we would put the hydraulic oil in ourselves to replace the shortage. No reason paying a technician hundred some dollars an hour when we can do the same thing for ten dollars an hour. At least that's what I get paid. Oh crap. Probably not gonna be enough. I mean, it's not even on the side glass. 
Just barely on the sight glass. Now don't start until I take the funnel out. Plenty of engine oil. Are you ready to start it? Let me put the cap on. It's right in the middle, it's probably good enough. There's a nice steady rain coming down outside now. It's probably gonna do this for the next few hours. Skyler from Sloan's is here installing software. Should fix our issue, we think. It took a little while to get the software to the laptop to the combine, but once Skyler got it onto the combine, there was like 10 different sets of updates that had to be pushed through from Deer through their system and worked immediately. So maybe there's a reason why John Deere employs more software engineers now than mechanical engineers, because software is pretty important. If I understood correctly, those updates do not come over unless they're sent over from the dealership or a service tech puts them on. They're not ones that we can say yes to without them getting sent manually by someone in the first place. I don't understand why some updates come over automatically and we have to say yes or no, and others that are obviously important to working, like folding your folding corn head, don't come on their own. Fast forwarding to the next day, it ended up raining on and off all day yesterday. At home, we had eight tenths. North of town, where I'm standing right now, they only had a tenth or two. Sprinkling in today, ground conditions are probably dry enough to pick corn in some fields, yet the dampness that continues to come down limits your ability to feed corn through the machine without making a mess, having a lot of head shell, and just not perfect conditions to harvest. So until the rain's clear, we aren't going to be able to pick any corn. We definitely can't cut any beans because they're way too wet to run. I'm here north of town ear testing some corn. We've got some Pioneer 110... 47 chrome I believe is the number and then next to it we've got Beck 6585 and 6469 I'm gonna run the 6585 and the Pioneer 110 47 chrome to the elevator because I don't have anything better to do to see what their moisture is at this was planted 10th of May let's say I haven't looked at my spreadsheet so I doubt it's dry enough but it's better than doing nothing keep an eye on our corn progress the rain definitely may have added a point or two, so I doubt it's even close. There's actually somewhat of a chance we could pick today if it didn't just rain again. I think our chances are slim. Maybe tomorrow there's a possibility. Another three tenths in the last hour at home this morning. I would venture to say that the taps have been turned back on. It's funny how things swing both directions. It's dry for six weeks and then you've got six inches of rain in the forecast one week not complaining just saying that's what we're dealing with right now someone's out splashing in the puddles wonder if mom knows about that <laughs> gets they're awesome hey buddy how was school yeah you know you're supposed to not get your pants wet right that's okay it happens there's worse reasons for having your pants wet, I could bet. They do a big... They do the... They do the come out? Sure. I'll be out in a second. Do you have your boots on? I have my work boots on. Give me a big splash. Let's see it. Big one. Wow! Oh, he even got his hands in it. Let's clean it on when he was There you go. Eye. This kid knows what he's doing. After a day of waiting, the results are in. No, it did not take me a day to figure out the moisture. It just took me a day to turn on the video machine and let you know. Both planted May 11th. The Pioneer 110-day corn was 22%, and the Beck's 115-day corn was 27%. They were a little damp just from being out in the moisture. Typically, when you ear test corn, you account for another 1% to 2%. I can't really explain why. I don't know if it's the cob moisture coming in or what. It just always harvests a point or two of moisture higher than it tests if you hand shell it. With the dampness, it's actually probably closer to what it showed, 22 or 23 for the 110 day corn, because that's going to commercial storage. 
unless they offer a heck of a drying discount, probably not gonna think about picking that at least until we cut some more beans. The rain is supposed to be out of the area until this weekend where they're calling for another two to three inches. That means after a few hours of drying this morning, we probably can pick some corn. However, there's one thing that we have to do first, unfortunately, and that's take off this silly grain tank extension that we had Sloan's put on. I'll just climb up here and give you an idea. Part of the trade agreement on this X9 was Sloan supplying the labor, not the parts, to install a grain tank extension. This X9000 comes standard with 420 bushel capacity of dry corn. We wanted to bump that up a little bit. I went into the Sloan's Express manual that was sitting there at the parts counter because we're part of Sloan's. That's the quickest way to get things. And I saw this brand of grain tank extension. From start to finish, Sloan's has way more hours in labor in this than they'd want to. They said this thing is overcomplicated. The instructions do not show you how to install it correctly. And quite simply, it does not work. Unlike a lot of the grain bin extensions that we're used to using, this one is a double fold. So the ones that you historically would put on just add an upper lip like you see there, except for this one to add even more bushels has a folding mechanism so it'll fit back. And you want to talk about overcomplicating something that probably doesn't need done. Adding a whole nother fold mechanism to the stock design is not good. I may have said this earlier in the video, it's my fault for looking at the manual and picking this one out because if I'd known better, I probably would have stayed away from it. After taking a long time to install it because of the aforementioned issues, we went to fold it. It didn't fold right. The front thing was catching on one of these arms. The back one was catching. It ended up bending this fold arm right here. After making further adjustments and replacing the bent arm here in front of us, it bent this bracket. Also bent the heck out of this bracket. Long story short, this topper is coming off. We don't want something this unreliable sitting on our combine holding an extra hundred and some bushels that could fall off at any time if it breaks. They're coming out this morning, taking it off. We're gonna run it factory while we pick corn today and we're ordering a simpler, more reliable option. Sloan's is supposed to be out first thing this morning. The lesson here is if you run this combine, I wouldn't recommend getting that brand of extension. Just complicated, too many moving parts to a system that's already over-engineered and slowed us down by quite a bit. Sloan's has probably got 15 man hours in this thing by now. Dad and I ran up to the field we think is close, did an ear test this morning. Even with the rain, it's only 17 and a half percent. So once Sloan's is done and they're about there removing that grain tank extension, we are going to head up and pick some corn. Most likely we will shuffle the equipment up there, wait a little bit just so the ground can dry off some more, then go from there. We've got two fields up here, different hybrids and also much different planting dates. April 16th or 17th, Pioneer 0953, and May 13th, Beck 6374. This stuff should be around 17 to 18, and that Bex corn, I bet it's upper 20 still. It's a difference, the hybrid and the planting date made. And honestly, the planting date's really the big differentiating factor. The neighbor to the north, Dave, is picking already, so that's a good vote of confidence for ground conditions. He was out here on Saturday when I ear tested this. We just didn't get the combine up because of that series of unfortunate events. All of this 100 acre field is going to Cole Station, that elevator a mile up the road. I think a lot of guys won't be running, so there shouldn't be a long line today. We might be able to keep the corn away with three trucks and two drivers, if not, Katie may end up running the X9 and then dad will be our third driver, then we can definitely move. I don't see this combine, even in good corn, 240 plus bushels an acre, being able to pick any more than 6,000 bushels an hour instant, probably more like 5,500 if it even runs correctly in the first place. So we should maybe possibly, good chance, be able to not stop because of trucks unless the elevator gets busy. Just gonna leave the grain cart on this uninhabited road for an hour or so and then we'll get the X9 up here and open it up. Looks like we're not waiting to bring the combine up because here it comes immediately. Jeff said this is predictable and I think he's right.
I told him he may need to run the corn head lower to actually stomp the stalks down or those LSWs aren't going to last very long. I hope the yield monitor is off because it says this corn stinks. Averaging 189 dry right now in this field, which is much lower than I've heard from the neighbors. So combine could be a little bit off or we're just not good farmers. Combine said this first little bit was kind of wet. I carried some of that 117 day pioneer to this field and that makes a big difference when you've got 109 day in the rest of the field. So maybe that's what we're picking. If it's over 19%, we're not gonna take this to the elevator in this moisture. We'll just let it sit out here and dry. Just radioed him and told him it probably needs to dump. Think he's got any on the cab? Yes, he does. That's kind of why I radioed you, Dad. Dad's getting out to make sure he's getting all the corn. He's probably disappointed by the yield monitor, so he doesn't want anything to be slipping by and us miss a bunch on the ground. Picking corn's pretty easy, so as long as the combine's shut up, you've got the settings halfway right, and you shouldn't be throwing much out. I'll be really blunt. A combine with this harvesting capacity, only having a 400 bushel grain tank from the factory makes zero sense. That's why we were trying to get the bigger one on, because another 100 bushel would make a big difference. This gets full fast, and it's not always a good thing. It's like having an eight row on the 780. Twelve rows, a six mile an hour job for the X9, at least. Can you even see out of that thing? Negatory. The problem with farming a field like this, short ways, having most of your rows the short way across the field, it gives you a ton of in rows. Dad always says to farm against the way the water flows, but it doesn't necessarily make sense logistically because we'll have. 20 acres off of this field before we're done. I don't know what he's doing with the bag. I don't know if he needs to use the bathroom or what. It's probably too early in harvest season to be needing a brown bag for using the bathroom. I think we got time to take a break. He's taking a little lunch break right now. He did request a scoop shovel though because he's run the corn over the top of this thing at least five times. I think he's only had five full hoppers so he's hitting 100% right now for overfilling. Once the grain tank full comes on on this combine, you might as well stop picking because it picks so much corn. There's no time or extra room. It's going to be overflowing it next to no time at all. This combine was making all sorts of dust up front. It has an integrated dust fan on the feeder house. And then dad realized the fan wasn't working because someone had shut it off. I don't know who. Could have been me, could have been him. Finally got that turned on and then he went in and shoveled everything off because there was a lot of stuff piled up there. I'm glad I wasn't recording because I would have had to show you the most magnificent, spectacular grain spillage off a combine I've ever seen when we were picking along these terraces. Dad turned the corner, turned around and went back the other way. He was fairly full. You need to get under this combine quick. Once it looks like it's about full, there's very little time, as I mentioned a second ago, before it is going to start running over. You need to be dumping. So he didn't put his auger out. I had to grab a bunch of gears to catch up with him, and we were on the side of a terrace, which makes it a little sketchy. I'm normally pretty reliable about getting to the right speed when I come through, but I think I just shifted down too aggressively and went two gears or three gears too far. And he started dumping at five and a half miles an hour, and I proceeded to slow way down. So he was about to start dumping over the front of the cart, jammed his hydrostat back to slow down, and I bet you 50 bushel ran off the top of the cart. It was honestly really impressive. It's good I didn't catch it on video because I would have had to have shown you all and it would have made us look really bad because it was, it was incredible. Not in a good way either. I mean, I've never seen so much corn run off a combine. cut beans it can also pick corn. Who would have guessed it? Hybrids and varieties change, combines change, everything seems to change but one thing remains the same. You still get the corn on the cab if you're not paying attention. 
They need to find a way to funnel it all back down into the rotor. Then you wouldn't have to scoop it off. Dad is inspecting something in the grain tank. I don't know what. Some on the fountain auger. It's not OSHA approved to do this while someone's in the tank. The trucks are just keeping up. Keep in mind, we're not going very far, so as long as there's not a line, they don't really have a problem. I've only had to load the third truck maybe once, and Dad and I have stopped a few times to do various small projects, like clean off the roof of his combine. Nate, what have these loads been testing? Uh, 177 on moisture, test weight 50 AT. All right, copy that. I think most of them have probed 17 to 18% moisture. Dad's machine is showing 19%. It's a little bit higher, it's kind of a rounding error at that point. Obviously, what the probe at the elevator says is all that matters. The combine's irrelevant. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a Marty cam in this episode. The film crew forgot to charge his camera. So blame them. Don't blame me. I'm not that person. I think that's holding the combine back a little bit. There's no reason to get too ambitious. We're dumping on the go at five and a half miles an hour. He's running over six when he's picking. That's a lot, but at the same time, it's probably capable of more. It's an absolutely beautiful evening here. Elevators open till seven. After three days of dreary fall weather, you gotta appreciate this one. time of day. I love this. So it sounds like this corn is mostly 18%. Not bad. Just headed up to the elevator. Closes in 12 minutes. I'd like to load the next truck, but Dad's screwing around picking point rows, and he should be here finishing up this so we can actually get a truck out. So, all right, he's the boss. He wants to be slow. That's just the way it will be. Oh, now we're in boss man. We get on the north end, Andy. Uh, dump that on me and let him take a half a load. Either he's been holding the combine back or he's just throwing a bunch out the rear end right now because we're running six mile an hour. I would guess he's not been pushing it all day. Hopefully they like us enough to not send that load home because it's going to get there after close. That's why I was upset that dad wasn't picking areas where there was more to be harvested in a timely manner so we didn't have to cut it so close on this load. That'll wrap it up for us. Last partial through of the field. A row of shame, if you will. It's inevitable eventually. The fields are not always going to be perfectly spaced on 60-foot segments to match your planter. As far as I know, the other truck is empty. I just offloaded the last of the corn from this field. As you can see right here, it made 239 wet bushels breaker. Based on talking to Jeff, nothing was over 18%. We'll use 18% as our wet moisture. 1.4% of shrink per point, which is 0 0.958 times 239. That makes our dry yield 228 bushels per acre. Respectable, a few bushels worse than we had out here two years ago but probably in line for expectations on this farm. We're gonna go ahead and leave the grain cart up here tonight. Dad's gonna take the big combine home just to get it at the fuel tank so we have something to do in the morning. And then we're gonna see what tomorrow brings. Before I go, I wanna see if the yield map showed anything enlightening. It's not fully loaded over here. We need to do some kind of adjusting to get rid of these gaps because those shouldn't be there. Good yields across here. I think the green is 240 to 250. Down by the waterway where we did all that dirt work, the bulldozer went through, probably compaction. Overall, decent yield. Don't really see anything that stands out to me as a no-brainer, right or wrong decision. These ends are pretty poor. That's gotta be water damage or compaction. Your ends are usually worse than the rest of the field. I'm walking back to the truck to help shuffle things around. My preliminary opinion of the X9 in corn is that it is good at picking corn, which should be expected. So far, and we've only done one field with short rows, it's actually easier to keep 
the one big machine running than the two medium and smaller machines running that I'm used to on some fields. Because I only have to go one place, I don't have to go two places and deal with two different combine operators. So there is an advantage to that. We had the trucks to keep it away. For the most part, I think if dad would have pushed the stick anymore, it wouldn't have been quite the case. We would have caught the trucks eventually. Basically, if the corn was any better or if the combine pushed any harder than it did, trucking would be an issue. And we may see that on some farms, just not here. This is a convenient farm to harvest and take to the elevator. Regardless, there'll be more adventures in the next day, the next video. Hope to see you all there. I'm taking off for the night. Have a good one. Peace!